You guys, I just made a startling discovery right now. Do you know who John Pringle looks like? Oh my god. He looks like Bam Margera. <laughs> okay, he's better looking than Bam, but he looks like Bam! Oh my god. Also, I realized Craig is partying so hard he's starting to sound like Steve-O. So let's get into it. Let's talk about these jackasses. Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Southern Charm, Season 7, Episode 4. You guys, it's a good season, but my god, they had so many flashbacks this episode. I swear to god, like three-fourths of the episode was flashbacks. It was kind of crazy, but we're still going to talk about it. Some stuff happened. Let's get into it. Just a reminder, I'm taking next week off. I already have stuff scheduled to go up, so you'll see 90 Day Fiance, Ladies of London, Real Housewives of Miami, so check that out. But um, I'll be back. Oh, I will still be covering The Undoing because it's episode 5 of 6, so you can look for that if you're watching that. Otherwise, I will see you week after next, and happy Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful week. Hey, guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island, like the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So check it out. Thanks so much. All right, this episode of Flashbacks starts with flashbacks. We are in full-on COVID. We get to see the beginnings. It's so depressing. Do you remember that feeling when it first happened and we thought, okay, two weeks, we can handle two weeks. We'll figure it out. It sucks. You know, we'll deal with it. <sighs> okay, moving on. Um, we see Craig yelling over the wall for Whitney, and he ends up calling him, and Whitney comes out. Whitney ends up throwing toilet paper at him, and he says, uh, you're not coming in here. <laughs> Craig explains that he stocked up on alcohol, but he has no food or toilet paper. You know, priorities. Um, he says, are you going to come over and play some video games? And Whitney says, no, I don't want to be anywhere near you. <laughs> Craig's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> We flash to one week earlier. We see Danny knocking on a door. It's Catherine's house. Leva arrives and she's pissed because she says, What? I've arranged childcare and everything. So they kind of fake us out and make us think once again Catherine's flaking because she does that. She disappears. No, Catherine shows up. She was just out running errands. She wants to speed up the process. Uh, so remember she's renovating her house she inherited this house but it reminded her of her mom who unfortunately suddenly passed away so she was kind of having it redone to have a better energy in it and she's sped up the process because apparently Thomas I don't even know what word to call him the monster I don't know is even bigger monster than we suspected he's having a boy and uh, yeah so she's trying to rush to get out. She thought she had a future with Thomas. No. So Madison shows up to help too. It's really nice. They all showed up to try to help her get organized and get into this house quickly. Get her kids out of Thomas's house. And yeah. So that's where we're at there. The editors really like to go back and forth in these scenes. So then we go back. We're over to Austin's house. Now remember Craig shacking up with him because... He had some asbestos problems, and yeah, so he's a roommate now. Um, Austin says coronavirus is a thing. <laughs> Craig is an idiot, and he's saying, no, it's not. Craig is, uh, oh yeah, I put a note. So like I said at the top of the show, Craig's starting to sound like Steve-O from Jackass. Tell me you've heard Steve-O's voice. It's very distinct. Craig's starting to sound like that. Just that smokery, party too hard, that kind of voice. Austin tells Craig about what happened with John Pringle. So apparently, we knew that Pringle was into Madison, right? And apparently, he ended up telling Madison <laughs> that she's beautiful. He's whispering that to her that he's conflicted. and He likes Austin, but he really likes her. I'm going to get into all that when we get over to Pringle, because I really want to know you guys' thoughts on this. Then we go back to the girl's house over at Catherine's, and Madison's telling the story, and she's basically saying the same thing. He had whispered to her that he likes her, and 
seats in front of Austin and Austin apparently stood up and yelled, you're in my house and you're telling her how you feel about her. And, um, he said, get the F out of my house. So my question is, come on, producers slash editors, where the heck are you? We need to see that video. There was a boys' night. What are we doing here? Why, why weren't the cameras on that? I don't understand. Not much going on in Southern Charm, so I really want to see that. Where were your cameras? Okay, so Austin's pissed. He's saying, you're in my house. You're telling her how you feel. And <sighs> Anyway, John Pringle stood up and said, don't you ever effing talk to me, boy. And Levin, she says, it must have turned you on a little bit. And Madison says, well, I was flattered. Austin, meanwhile, is saying, why do you think I'm someone that you can just play? Craig says, there's a million girls in Charleston. Why would he come on to your friend's girl? Uh, and then they say, do you think Patricia's feeling the fire? And Austin says, yes, I do. So, okay, let's talk about this. I don't want to ruin the illusion. I want to have fun with it. This is a fun show. I enjoy it. Does this seem totally manufactured to you? Do you think he actually does have feeling for Madison? Because it's weird that he just shows up. Madison's a gorgeous girl. She's actually my favorite on the show. But I just wonder, it's just a little weird to just show up and be like, hey girl. <laughs> and to have these feelings for, and then so much so that you do this in front of one of your guy friends that's dating this girl. And it just, this part seems a little forced to me. I just don't know that I believe it. It's an interesting storyline. You know, and Patricia's getting involved. She's like, yeah, you should go with Pringle and... Austin's not good enough, so now Austin will have beef with Patricia. I just wonder, what are your thoughts on this? Does it seem forced? Does it seem real? I don't know. Let's say for the sake of argument it is real. John Pringle's a dick. <laughs> I, I mean, I like him. I like him on the show, but that's a dick move. Like, she's free to decide, and if she breaks up with Austin, and then you want to approach her, cool. But while she's with him, really? Like... I don't know. That's just kind of a dick move. That's just my thought on that. All right. So we go over to John Pringle's house and he's explained that his boys will be there in two weeks. And again, I have this note that says Pringle looks like Bam Margera. That's all I could think of. It just hit me all of a sudden. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look at the beginning of this episode or Google it because he's that guy off jackass that does crazy things and they, they just kind of have that look. I think Pringle's definitely more attractive than Bam, especially now, but I don't know. They just kind of have a look. Okay, moving on. So Pringle's FaceTiming his sister, and he's telling her about it. And did you catch the line he said? It was very strange. He says, I have a problem with telling guys I like their girlfriends. Well, if that's the case, then that's not manufactured for TV, and he is a dick. So I just didn't care for that at all. Also, did you catch this? Look at John Pringle's shirt here. Okay. So you see that? The very next scene we see Shep in Tech Out Shep shirt. What the hell is happening here? Why are they wearing the same clothes? That's super weird. Alright, so we see Shep and Taylor. They're playing tennis. And Shep is such an ass. I used to have such a crush on Shep, but now he's disgusting. <laughs> he says things like this that just really make me dislike him. He says, this is going to sound so snobby. I'm pretty proficient at country club sports. And again, all I could think there is Anchorman, Ron Burgundy. I have many leather-bound books. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. Okay, so he's trying to impress her and show her that he can play tennis. She tells him, you're not too bad for an old man. They sit down and they talk about that double date with Austin and Madison because there's nothing else to talk about. And they say it was fun. And then he's like, we had the talk. <laughs> Taylor says uh, it's the man's job to bring up the talk, whether or not they're exclusive. But, you know, I heard something recently, and now I wish I remember where I heard it. I think it was on Watch What Happens Live. I think Shep basically said, or maybe it was one of the other guys, said they say they have the talk, but they really still haven't had the talk. They're still together, but... They don't really define things. So, I don't know. I I mean, that's between them. I just thought that was kind of strange. It's like, you're 40. We're not, we're not 22 anymore. What are we doing? Then we go over to Craigie. Craigie FaceTimes his parents. And it's interesting to see his parents. They just, I don't know, they seem like normal people. It's cool. 
Um, so, of course, he has asbestos in his heating and air system. That sucks. So he says he has to pay the abatement. It's $38,000. In the meantime, we see a flash to him looking around for another place to rent while it gets fixed up. Um, and the place he's looking at is $3,900 a month. And I ask you, where does he get all this money? I know they're making money on the show. It can't be that much, right? I know a lot of them have trust funds and all this, but is Craig one of them? I mean, he can't be doing that well on pillows. This is the stuff I really need to know. How much is Craigie making? How much does he have in his bank account? That's the stuff I want to know. Um, Craig tells them, I love it at Austin's, but we're not the best influences for each other. No shit. Then we go back to John Pringle. He just seems to be driving around in his truck for something to do. I guess he just doesn't have a lot of friends there, so they film him driving around in his truck. He's calling Shep, and we see his caller ID calls him Shep Dog in the caller ID. And really, that just feels weird and dated and kind of gross. They're talking about Patricia's dinner, and he's trying to find a suit. So he can't get Shep on the phone, so he calls Craig, and Craig's like, It's cool, man. Let's go. We'll go together and look later. And Pringle's like, all right, thanks, man. So again, nothing for him to do except for drive around and trap. Speaking of Anchorman, I say that because look at her outfit. Um, we have Catherine over at Gwen's. And I just don't know. I'm struggling with Catherine. I used to like Catherine. I thought she brought something to the show. But I don't know that she's bringing anything anymore. She's working on Gwen's and her uh, on their public presence, and I'm thinking after all this scandal, probably not so much anymore. Uh, they're talking about a buying trip in New York, and the lady there is like, um, "Hello, everything's shutting down because of Corona." I think she literally says, "Like, you might want to look that up." So Craig's at this shop, and. He's explained that Patricia has these very eloquent parties and that he should be dressed nice. He, he also explains that his style fluctuates. When he moved to Charleston, he became really preppy. And I'm getting scared because I'm thinking, this is what we're spending our time on. What's happening in Southern Charm? Pringle tries on a coat and it looks nice on him, but he finds out the coat is $1,400. He literally says, I can't afford this. I got to put this on layaway. $1,400 for a coat. Is that a thing? I don't buy men's clothes. That's a little much. That seems a little excessive. Okay, so this is where we do this thing where we go back and forth again. We go to Madison. She's FaceTiming Patricia. P.S. Patricia had to hang up on Madison because she's working on bidding on an auction. Madison thanks Patricia for loaning her the necklace that she ended up wearing to that Persian night over at Levis house. She tells her she thinks about the Pringle. Oh, she tells her about the, the John Pringle Austin in the talk that they had. The same time, we go back over to Craig and Pringle. Again, I don't think they have much going on this season. So they're kind of flashing back and forth to make it feel more interesting and dramatic. It kept my attention. It's just, if it were a housewife show, I'd be bored. For this show, I'm okay with it. Um... Craig's asking Pringle if he has a thing for Madison, and he basically says, yeah, I do. Madison says, Pringle thought he had a chance. He's conflicted about his feelings for me and his friendship with Austin. So he, she's telling Patricia this. Meanwhile, supposedly Patricia's feeding, you know, the whole, hey, Madison, you should date Pringle, and telling Pringle, hey, Pringle, you should date Madison. So... Uh, we get a flash to Patricia pushing Pringle to like Madison. Says she takes, um, oh, Patricia says she takes a little responsibility, but no guilt. There's nothing wrong with trading up. Talking about getting Madison to try to dump Austin to go out with Pringle. Okay, so back to Pringle and Craig. They talk about Patricia leading Pringle down the path. Now all the guys are meeting up for dinner at Patricia's. So it sets the stage to be something interesting. But of course, as we know, the dinner gets postponed. So I don't know. It just feels manufactured. So here's the other weird thing going on. Uh, we go over to Leva's house. And I say weird because I think they just filmed like three scenes with Leva. And they just keep using the same stuff over and over. Because she's still... I mean, it's clearly the scene from the first episode, right? Where she's cooking dinner. She's wearing the same outfit. Her son's wearing the same outfit. 
her husband's wearing the same outfit. It's just like, hey, let's just use this again. So I'm like, did you guys not film much with Eleven? What's going on here? It's weird. She's talking to her husband, Lamar, and they're worried because, of course, they own all these restaurants. They're really worried because Corona's rolling in. They're worried about tourism stopping. She ends up having a meeting with her people. They're informing her about they're starting to get cancellations because of Corona. They have these events scheduled that they don't think they'll be able to host because of Corona. She explains seven years of everything they've built this rest in these restaurants, and they would probably never recover from it if they, you know, if they went down. So that's, you know, that's interesting to see, and it's hard to watch. So many people are in this position, so I understand why they're showing this, but damn, that sucks. That's depressing. So then we have Craig moving into his rental property. Uh, Shep shows up, and what does he bring? Corona beer. That sounds right, about right. He's a walking coronavirus. Shep says, Craig is a conspiracy nut. He thinks 5G is responsible for Corona. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot until they flash back. Do you remember that um, Craig thought if you get a flu shot, it could make you walk backwards? Okay. Craig thinks his house is more of a mature bachelor pad. Okay, Craig. Oh, my God. Um, Whitney is FaceTiming. They're going to postpone that dinner, that guy's dinner they're going to have. I bet Pringle's pissed if he spent all that money on that jacket. Whitney calls them. Oh, that was funny. So when he's talking, when Whitney's talking to them, he calls them a walking Petri dish. And I remind you, Whitney, that your early season, you had, you like, we were introduced to Catherine because she like slept over at your house. So aren't you a walking Petri dish too? Craig is still going to have a housewarming, even though Corona's going on. Uh, they're talking about, oh, so Craig has an important meeting in New York a couple weeks. So he's worried about that. So we go over to Madison and her very cute little boy Hudson she brings him out to meet Austin for ice cream and it's cool to see I mean I don't know Austin seems sweet with the little boy but Austin is just a big dum-dum so it's hard for me to watch him because I think this poor kid is probably already smarter than Austin what are we doing here Austin says things like you have good genes and you have good genes to Madison and I just want to bang my head against the window. I just wouldn't be able to handle Austin. I wouldn't. I think I'd rather go out with Shep than Austin. <sighs> I don't know. I think they're equally as dumb as each other. Um, Austin orders something as a called a gold digger Sunday. Madison says to camera that she knows it hurts Austin feelings that Patricia thinks he's not good enough for me. Madison says she could see Austin being a stepfather if things continue to go this way. Spoiler alert. I don't think they're still together. <laughs> Madison and Austin talk about Patricia and Madison is saying that she put Patricia in her place and said she and Austin are in love. We didn't get to see that part. Did I miss that part? I don't think we got to see that part. Okay. Then we get a flash of four days later. Craig wakes up and he cannot stop coughing. I blame the alcohol. Everything is completely closed up and Pringle FaceTimes them and... I felt bad for Pringle here. You know, I've been talking a lot of crap about him this episode, but I felt bad for him because his sons are supposed to be coming for the summer for a visit. And he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know if he should just pack up and go quarantine in California with them. He doesn't know what to do. And we also see Leva, and she is very scared for her business. She's explained that they have over 100 employees and... You know, even if they switch to takeout to try to save the businesses, it's not going to support 100 employees. They don't know what to do about that. We see Madison and Austin. They're FaceTiming. They're worried about her hair business. They're worried about his beer company. They're talking about, how are we going to do this? We're going to have to live on ramen for a little bit. And then we see Shep FaceTiming Craig. Craig is going to go ahead and cancel that housewarming party. Shep has gone to Hilton Head to quarantine with his parents. But he's worried that Taylor's been exposed, so she's had to stay behind and quarantine herself. And then we get a big to be continued. And honestly, I'm not sure that it warranted that. I don't know that... I mean, flash forward, here we are in December, we're still in the same crazy mode, the crazy world that we live in, but... So I don't know that that warranted it to be continued, because nothing much has changed. 
we do get a flash of next time. See Michael in his mask and his gloves, and he's trying to help out Patricia. We find out that Craig and Austin are quarantined together. I wonder what the heck happened with that rental house, and why well, get that if you're just going to quarantine together? We see Madison talking to, I assume that's her mother, about her relationship with Austin. Then we find out Austin might actually be sick. And Madison's pissed because he didn't, he went out. And so he might have been exposed. And she's not sure. And so now he can't be around her and the kid. Then we're going to get into Catherine and all the idiot things she's done. We talk about her family, her Emoji sending, all the really bad decisions, and yeah, we're going to get into all that. Ugh, Catherine. Okay, so that is it for the episode, you guys. I thought it was pretty good. I know I talked a lot of crap, but it was, I'm still enjoying it. I'm not ready to give it up. Um, it's kind of depressing to see all the corona stuff, but yeah. Okay, so next week I am off, but don't worry. Next episode I will talk about in the following episode when I cover that, so stay tuned. Still continue to check back to my channel because I'll be posting stuff all next week, even though I'm gone. I already scheduled it. If you like Real Housewives of Miami, that's coming. Ladies of London Season 2 is coming. 90 Day Fiance is coming. All kinds of good stuff. And you guys, even if you don't watch 90 Day Fiance, you're going to want to check out the video because I'm saving you... An hour and a half per episode, yep, that's how long the episodes are, to show you all the crazy stuff that goes down on that show. It's kind of shocking. So check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Thanksgiving. That's for my, even my non-American friends, my American friends, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Just enjoy your families. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I really appreciate everything. If you really want to support the show, Check out my Patreon. I'm covering Scary Island and all the amazing things happening over there. Uh, that will also be going up next week. Don't worry about that. And thank you guys for watching. Leave me comments below. I love them. I read them all. Or find me on Twitter at Real Recaps. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.